Hello, welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are Galatians 5 and Psalm 10. Now, Galatians 5 is that great wrestling text. The text that speaks about our wrestle with our flesh, our old man. It's an incredible chapter uh, of God's sanctification. In other words, His cleaning of us. So, uh, most appropriately, I'm standing in one of my most favorite places in the whole world. This is my outside shower. It's a bit rustic, as you can see. But this is where I often meditate and think, God, what are you doing with me? How are you dealing with me? So let's jump straight into uh, Galatians 5. This is uh, what uh, Paul says. He immediately brings up the issue. He says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again with slavery. He says, listen, if you go back through the laws and you go and get yourself circumcised, that was the big issue, the Greeks having to be circumcised to become Christians, then Christ is of no value to you. You've fallen away from grace. Don't you understand? You've been saved by grace, not because you've had an operation or because you've obeyed some laws. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Think about that. The only thing that counts is faith. In other words, trusting God, God to change you. God to lead you, God to guide you, God to be with you, God to give you identity. The only thing is faith in him expressing itself through love. I sent this verse to my son today. He's at a cricket uh, camp up at Potchester University, surrounded by very godless guys. And my encouragement to him was, my boy, cricket is one thing, academics is one thing. But this only thing that counts, the only thing that counts is your faith. Faith that God's working with you, that he's got you, that he's got your future, expressing itself through love. You see, because when we're in that position, when we're secure, knowing that God's in command, we can love. We can be joyful. We can declare him to other people. And then he turns his attention to the person who's bringing in the heresy. He says that person, the one who's asking you to become legalists. You know, he's going to have to pay the full penalty. He says, as far as these agitators are concerned, wanting you to have operations, I wish that they would just go ahead and emasculate themselves. I mean, that is hectic. That's saying, I hope the operation goes wrong and they remember this for a long, long time. But then he turns and he says, listen, you are free. You're free to live like Jesus. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. So I say it again. Walk by the Spirit and you won't gratify the, the sinful desires of the flesh. You don't have to fulfill all our laws. Just keep in step with the Spirit. Realize that He's got you. And as you put your trust in Him, He will help you. And then He lines up the two ways of living. He says, if you want to go legalist, if you want to go in your own strength, you're going to wind up doing this. The acts of the flesh are sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, faction, envy. He says that that's how you're going to wind up living. You won't help yourself. Our friend Luke asked me this question. He says, why is selfish ambition put in that line? He says, well, what, well, in fact, he asked the question, what's the difference between ambition? Because surely you need to have dreams and hopes and desires and selfish ambition. Well, selfish ambition... Uh, is the pre the preface there selfish it's all about me all about my efforts my works my abilities now god wants that removed he, he wants your ambition to be centered in god and god fueled god orientated god ordained then ambitions are right and he says but you know the fruit of the spirit is different to that it's love joy peace patience kindness and gentleness and he says since we live by the spirit let us keep in step with the spirit Wonderful chapter. Wonderful, wonderful chapter. Let's quickly go to uh, Psalm 10. And Luke asked this question. He says, why in the psalm does the psalmist say, God, you so far off? And then end the psalm by saying, but he's a defender of the fatherless. He's right there with me. Well, this, you've just got to follow how the psalm lays out. He, the psalmist, this is a psalm of lament. It's a psalm of petition. And he's basically saying, you seem, God, so far off. Look at my enemies. They're all around me. Um, why are you hiding yourself? He's basically saying, God, please, please don't, don't stay there any longer. And then he describes the problem. He says, the wicked people are around me. It looks like nothing's going wrong with them. It looks like they're triumphing. And then he ends by saying, arise, Lord, lift up your hand, God. Do not forget the helpless. 
the victims. We commit ourselves to you. You, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted, encourage them, defend the fatherless and the oppressed. So he, he starts by saying, God, it looks like you're far away. This is the situation. These guys are like wicked and they're all around us. Please intervene. We know you're the God who looks after those who are desperate. Great way to pray.